morning, I'm Elvia. We're from Group 5 and we'll be presenting to you about the revenue recognition of Spotify from an IFRS 15 perspective. Before I begin our presentation to you today, first of all, I will start with the outline of the presentation. We will be giving us an overview of IFRS 15 regarding the revenue from contracts with customers, especially the five steps of revenue recognition. Next, we will try to understand the business model of Spotify, what are its product offerings, who is its user base, and how it's the company's pricing scheme. Next, we'll be doing a deeper analysis about the revenue scheme of Spotify. And last but not least, we'll see how Spotify aligns with the implementation of IFRS 15. Now, beginning with the overview of IFRS 15, let's, we all know that uh, revenue recognition itself is made up of five steps, which is contract identification, identification of the performance obligation, determining the transaction price, allocating the transaction price, and recognizing revenue. So we're going to start with the first step, which is contract identification. A contract creates enforceable rights and obligation between two parties and can be in the form of written, oral, or even implied. According to IBRS 15, a contract has a few attributes that makes it a contract. The first one is that the parties have approved the contract and are committed to perform their obligations. The second one is that each party's rights to the goods or services to be transferred can be identified. The third one is that the payment terms can also be identified. The fourth one is that the contract has to have a sub commercial substance, meaning that there is a monetary value for the contract. And the fifth attribute of a contract is that it is probable that a consideration could be collected once the transfer of goods or services has been done. Now moving on to the second step of revenue recognition, which is identifying performance obligation. A performance obligation is essentially the goods or services that is promised in a contract. The key word here for the performance obligation is distinct because each goods or services that are distinct should be regarded as separate performance obligation. However, a series of distinct goods or services that are substantially the same can be regarded as one performance obligation. Moving on to the third step of revenue recognition is the determination of transaction price. This step is pretty straightforward because transaction price is essentially the amount of consideration that a party is expected to be entitled to once they have fulfilled their performance obligation or transferred the goods or services that they have promised to the other party. Thank you, Devin, for the explanation. Now I'm going to continue explaining the last two steps of revenue recognition. Okay, so the fourth step of revenue recognition is allocation of transaction price. A contract might consist of only one single performance obligation or it also might consist multiple performance obligations. When a contract consists of multiple performance obligations, the entity should allocate the transaction price to the performance obligation in the contract by reference in the relative standalone selling prices. Best evidence of the standalone selling price is the actual separate sales of a similar good or service, but more often than not, this selling price is not available. When that's the case, entity can estimate the standalone selling price with several approaches such as the adjusted market assessment process approach and then it also can use expected cost plus market approach and residual approach. Or the, they can also use the combination of the three. And if the contract contains discount or variable item, the entity should also estimate how those values should be allocated and attributed. And then, now we can go to the fifth step. The fifth step is the recognition of the revenue. Revenue can be recognized either at one point in a time or on over time. An entity recognizes revenue over time only if at least one of the following criteria is met. The first one is if the customer simultaneously receives and consumes the economic benefits of the provided asset as the entity performs. The second one is when the seller's performance creates or enhances an asset controlled by the customer as the asset is created. And the third one is the seller's performance creates an asset with no alternative use and the seller has an enforceable right to payment for performance completed today. If a performance obligation is not satisfied over time, then the entity 
recognize it at one point in a time. That's all. Thank you. So next we will discuss about Spotify business model. As we know, Spotify is a two-side marketplace where music artists and music fans encounter in a single platform. Uh, it business model based on freemium, free and premium, with ad-supported service and paid membership. So the next topic, we will talk about business canvas model of Spotify. Business canvas model is important to the business to know how the business creates, delivers, recognize its customer and values or other contexts to achieving their ongoing plans and goals. And here, business canvas model of Spotify have four several keys. They are users, service delivery, risk, and performance. The first one is users also have four sec section they are users service proposition channels and usage so the first one i will talk about the users we know that the users of spotify can be divided by three groups they are music lovers and then music likers and music rarities Music lover can access and search the music or artist that they want to listen because they know specifically what music or artist that they interest. Beside, music likers is not so fanatically about the music and artist, so they can use the mix album or playlist that Spotify has provided before. And for music rarities, who are not having any idea about music and artists, they can use and click browse tab, tab to search about the latest update in music and artists. And then the next one is service proposition. Service proposition will explain how and why people use the music service and then the explanation about the value that the service can bring. Spotify can access its user to listen the music everywhere and every time. And the user can discover a great music without any to carry music device such as MP3 or CDs or even music players so they can easily listen music every time they want and then spotify also uh, can make it user to follow other communities so they can know uh, what others is listening to and then there are a library section where user can make their own playlists and albums and next one is channels so by describing the channels it will make Spotify uh, know uh, with whom the business communicates and reach the customer segment. And then uh, it is also explain how the business can uh, available in many channels. So the channels that the user can get Spotify application is by downloading the application in Google Play Store or Apple Store. Uh, and also uh, the user can use the application or service via website and the next one is usage usage can be tracked by defining how can the use users use the music service and then how frequently the service to be used as we know that uh, the free user can upgrade itself into premium user so spotify implement a self-service for its users to upgrade from free into premium users with making a payment and subscription after the business model canvas of uh, users the next key is about service delivery which consists two section there are uh, actors and key activities the actors is 
who are the person or people that are involved to deliver Spotify music service. It also explain who are the key partners, suppliers, and stakeholders of Spotify. So the actors of Spotify is, uh, of course, the customer and staff support staff of Spotify, and then the artist who wants to release and distribute their album, and then media, music blogger, and then uh, radio, TV channels, and many more. And then for the last one that I will explain is about the uh, key activities of Spotify. The key activities required to deliver the Spotify music service is such as signing artists and albums and then uh, curating the uh, applications and contents such as creating playlists to its users and then um, uh, resolving the support issues to fix the troubleshooting that may happen. Thank you, Yolanda, for the presentation. So, the next component is risk. First, challenges. What challenges Spotify foresee in the future? First, persuading artists to buy in the royalty model. Second one, persuading customers to upgrade the premium service. And the third, technology is not ready yet for the users. And the fourth, differentiating with other similar music service. Next, what are Spotify key competitors? First, other streaming music like Amazon, Apple Music. And the second one is digital download like iTunes, Google Play, or, other, or others. And the third, uh, illegal download like BitTorrent. And the fourth, radio, uh, music TV channel. The last component is performance. First, ROI. How will the service deliver ROI? First, customer upgrading to premium subscription. Second, advertising revenue stream. Third, partner for app purchase royalty. Fifth, music royalty payment. And the last, infrastructure cost. And next is KPI. Which KPI are used to track the performance? First, number of subscription. Second, percentage premium subscription. And the third, songs play. Fourth, frequency of use. Fifth, shares. And the last is app download. This is the chart of Spotify Premium subscribers and we can see from 2011 until 2019 the number of premium subscription is increased. Spotify revenue recognition Based on the research and data from statistics, the number of Spotify Premium subscription from first quarter 2015 until fourth quarter of 2016 has increased considerably. It started uh, from only 18 million premium subscription until now has 124 million premium subscription. Spotify has reported total revenue reached 7.44 billion of which almost 90% based on premium and 10% uh, based on free service. Thank you everyone, my name is Tafi and I'm going to present about the implementation of IFRS 15 on Spotify. So, as mentioned before, we all know that Spotify earns its revenue from its two revenue line. First is the premium segment and the second is the ad, support, uh, ad supported revenue base. In its 2019 annual report, um, Spotify premium segments contributes approximately 89.9% of its total revenue and the remaining 11.1% was generated from the ad supported revenue. Uh, in this premium segment model, Spotify has three or four uh, several uh, uh, four models of the main contracts. First is the package that they sell directly to the end users. Second is the package that they sell with the discounted trial periods. And third is the package that they sell through partners. And lastly is the package that they sell through uh, the third party service or products. However, in this analysis, we will combine the third and fourth model into one view of implementation. 
Starting with the premium service that are sold directly to the end users, this model are typically paid monthly in advance. But in Indonesia, Spotify has several contract packages, namely the monthly subscription, the three month subscription, the six month subscription, and even weekly subscriptions. Other than that, Spotify also offer the group um, group subscriptions that it uh, that is packed up in the family offer. So in this Spotify family subscription, it differs in price according to the sum of family members included uh, in the contract. In the first step of this model, contract is identified when customer agree to the subscription by fulfilling and submit the agreement page or agreement forms, and also by fulfilling the advance payment, either it's monthly or six months or even weekly. Uh, and then the performance obligation is to deliver the music service within the contract uh, within the contract period. Regarding the, uh, determining the transaction price. This is the very easy and clear step as each package contract has its predetermined generic price. And then the difference is only on each package whether it is weekly, monthly, or three monthly as the price differs also. Next, the transaction price is allocated to each performance obligations based on the relative standalone selling price. And on the notes, family package includes uh, several performance obligations and may have different allocation of the transaction price too. In the last step, when Spotify satisfies the music delivery, revenue that is recognized on a straight basis over the subscription period. Next up, we'll be discussing about discounted uh, trial periods for premium services. There are several discounted trial package which differs along the year or period, one of which is the three month discount uh, which have the discount payments, uh, for example, uh, uh, for three months uh, subscription, we only have to pay for about uh, 5,000 rupiah. And then uh, the other popular discount package is that Spotify give two months of free trial, then followed by normal price on the third month if the customer, if the customer choose to continue the, subs the subscription. This model will make several differences on the step model of recognition of revenue. First, the contract is identified when customer agree to the subscription, which will differ among package because when the discount package uh, includes uh, the discount payments, uh, the contract is made when the customer agree to the uh, to agree to the agreement form and also. Uh, fulfill the advance, uh, the discounted advance payment, but uh, in a package that only offers you uh, the two months of free trials, and then the third month you you may uh, you may uh, pay accordingly uh, to the normal price. So the contract is made uh, only when you fulfill uh, and submit the agreement form, uh, and you also put out your debit card or credit card number and some other verifications so they can uh, verificate for verificate uh, your uh, subscriptions the second step is much alike with the first model so we will uh, step uh, so we will skip to the uh, third step which is determining in the, the traction the transaction price this may differ between this discount package and so is in the allocation of price to the performance obligations uh, and lastly, about the uh, revenue recognition, consideration received for discounted trial periods is recognized in revenue on a straight line basis too over the term of, uh, of the discounted trial period. And the following month, uh, when you pay for the normal price, uh, it will be uh, it will be uh, recognized as the selling to direct uh, end users. Moving on to the last model, Spotify has teamed up uh, with several partners or several third parties such as Indosat, IM3, and Shopee, and even else. Under these three arrangements, a premium partner may bundle the premium service with its existing product or offer the premium service as an add-on. In the five-step model analysis, 
Firstly, contract is identified when partner agree to the negotiated partner agreement, whether it involves bundling or an add-on offer. Then, Spotify will satisfy the performance obligation, while the premium partner services, whether they organize gross or net revenue, uh, have one material performance obligation, which is the delivery of the premium services of Spotify itself. And Spotify also assess the facts and the, and the circumstances uh, regarding the, whether the partner is acting as a principal or an agent and then of all partner revenue arrangements and then recognize the revenue either gross, uh, either gross or net. Mm, regarding the transaction price, it is negotiated selling price based on the price charge to the customer uh, regarding to the negotiated partner agreements before. And then the allocation of price is done by adjusting to the negotiated partner agreement also. So the pre uh, premium services sold through partners are recognized as their re revenue based on a per subscriber rate in the negotiated agreements. As the conclusion, these three models of premium segment generally recognize its revenue on a straight line basis, but it also recognizes a revenue uh, per, uh, per subscriber rate uh, if the third model is applied. All in all, based on the IFRS 15 or PSAK 72, uh, in all steps within the five steps model, we conclude that Spotify has successfully applied its revenue recognition in accordance to the standards for all three models uh, in this premium segment. Lastly, uh, we also can understand that the collectability of the revenue is generally not subject to the high uncertainty because uh, as we all know the price and the contract is generic and is predetermined uh, clearly and uh, almost in a in an exact manner and then about the clarity of the agreement between negotiated partners is also clear and properly arranged in a low base negotiated partner agreement that is all from me and my colleague Kurnia Dewi will then present regarding the ad supported. Hi, my name is Kurnia Dewi Rahmawati and I will continue the presentation about the recognition of Spotify ad supported revenue. First of all, we have to know about how Spotify generate their ad supported revenue. Spotify generate their ad supported revenue by delivering advertisement through display, audio, or video advertising. It all started when Spotify enters into an arrangement with advertising agency that purchase advertising on Spotify platform. After the arrangement has been done, it is recorded on the insertions order. The insertions order specify the terms of arrangement, such as the type of advertisement product, pricing, insertions date, and the required number of impressions in a state period. An insertions order may include multiple performance obligations, and for that case, Spotify has to determine the standalone price based on the price charge to the customer. Here's an example of an advertisement sponsored by Subway. This is the type of advertisement that is delivered through display. The number of how many times people see this advertisement on Spotify called impression. Now, how does the revenue recognition of the, of the advertisement based on IFRS 15? The first step is to identify contract with customer. It happens when Spotify and an advertiser set an agreement and recorded it on the insertion order. The second step is to the is to identify performance obligation. The performance obligation for Spotify is to deliver the advertisement through audio, display, or video advertising. The third step is to identify the transaction price. Typically, the agreement of advertisement is set based on cost per thousand basis. Means that a fixed price is set for a thousand number of impression. The fourth step is to allocate transaction price to each performance obligation.
For a single performance obligation, the transaction price has to be allocated on each number of impression. For multiple performance obligations, the transaction price has to be allocated on each performance obligation on the relative standalone price based on the price charge to the customer. The fifth step or the final step is to recognize revenue upon the delivery of impressions. So, unlike the premium revenue that has three models, the ad supported revenue only has one model. In conclusion, Spotify should only recognize revenue upon the delivery of impressions. That's all for my presentations. Thank you.